I want to start with this because many of you have been having this same feeling. I have been in anticipation and in expectation for something big for quite some time. I will say for the past year, I've been feeling the need to start preparing and getting things in order because God is getting ready to, to create a platform. God is getting ready to cause um, a massive opportunity to, to hit my life for his glory. And I just believe that through this feeling of expectation and this time of, 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 of me of saying, okay, Siobhan, you got to get prepared. I believe that God was watching the response as he's still watching how I will respond to opposition, how I will respond to the naysayers, how I will respond when I really don't know all the details, how I, how I will respond when I don't have a whole bunch of people rooting in my corner. How, God is watching how I will respond when I give something small. Let me see if she'll get the big head. Let me see if she'll get puffed up. Let me see if I give her this instruction, will she obey? If I tell her last, last year, don't ask for another dime on cyber church. Just preach the word and I'll provide. Let me see if she'll do it. Let me see if she'll honor me. Let me see if she'll be ready for what I am going to release. Because before the father releases it, you have to go through a season of preparation. Which is something that a lot of us don't like to do because preparation make, it makes us to, uh, it causes us to step out of our comfort zone. When you got to prepare for stuff, yeah, guess what? Preparation costs money. Huh? Preparation comes with you being willing to uh, inconvenience and make sacrifices. Preparation causes you to have to shift and transition. So part of my transition is, all right, pack up your stuff, and now y'all got to go to Texas. And I don't know what's going to happen for me in Texas, but God says relocate. God says move. We get to Texas, and we're here, and we're settled. And now I get a call from a young lady who has now become a very instrumental part of my life. Her name is Lolita. And I met Lolita in, in, in New Jersey. At my husband's church. And Lolita was serving one of the minstrels that was there serving in the ministry that we pastor in New Jersey. She was there as a servant. She was there making sure that this artist was well taken care of. And we just hugged. And, and Lolita released the word of the Lord over my life. And this was last year sometime. And then I saw her again at an event. And didn't see her anymore. And one particular day, Lolita calls me out the blue. And the leader says, you are on the father's mind and I have been sent to prepare you for your future. She said, I, I need you to understand that, that what you're doing and where you are is, 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 is just preparation. That this, this ain't it. The lives that you're impacting, you, you've seen nothing yet. And because you're going somewhere that is far bigger than what you can imagine, you have to be prepared in every area. She said, so that's where the father sends me. And I know God sent her because when it's time, God, I receive the seed. God will send you everything that you need to make sure that you are ready. Somebody catch that word. I said, God will send you everything you need and God will send you the people that you need to make sure that when that door opens, you will not fumble the ball. You will not look bad. You will not fail. You hear me? You'll be coming out there like a G. So she says to me, we got to get your social media page cleaned up. We got to get your, 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 your website upgraded. We got to get Use some pictures. We got to get this podcast released and it's going to cost you. How many of you all know that you cannot want bigger and not be willing to invest in bigger? Now this for all the cheap folk that don't like to spend money. If you see yourself, Siobhan, being like a female Billy Graham, if you see yourself, Siobhan, on the level of a, 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 a African-American Joyce Myers, then you got to start getting yourself in position. And so your stuff can't look like you in somebody's backyard. Your videos can't look cloudy and fuzzy. Your pictures can't look like you're 96 years old when you a fly 46 year old. You can't look like old, ashy, apostolic, uh, dry face. 
And you're trying to reach people that are millionaires and billionaires that need Jesus Christ. Because you can be saved all day, but you won't be attractive. So we got to change your look. We got to, you know, you, you got style. But again, for where we see you going, you're going to have to invest in it. So guess what? Every seed that you all sowed into me, every dime that you all sent to me, I used it to invest into where God was taking me. I sowed into where I was going. I pour into speakers. I pour into those who are homeless. I give it to those who are building churches, who are feeding the hungry. I want you all to understand, I hate when preachers act like they don't need the, the, the saints money. I hate when pastors act like, yeah, they pay tithes, but, 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 no, Joker, you, you live off them tithes. Because of you all seed, because of you all's blessings, I'm able to do what I'm doing. I'm able to get beyond the matrix lights. I'm able to get a backdrop. I'm able to have 50 lights in there. I'm able to have a, a nice camera for my podcast. I'm able to go and get pictures done. I'm able to post nice flyers. I'm able to have a website that looks clean and crisp and up to date. Because of y'all, I dare not act like, yeah, I, I don't need these people. No, y'all are a blessing to me. And I thank you. The Bible says that men will give unto your bosoms. Just like the enemy uses people to try to mess us up and get us off. Guess what God uses? People to bless us. And God has used because of my obedience and my sacrifice to being on this thing every Monday when I can. Tired, sick, coughing, half voice. It don't matter. I'm going to break my neck and cook dinner. But I'm going to get up here on this live because this is what the Father told me to do. And because I am obedient, I am blessed every week. I don't, I, I don't, I don't lie about money. I, I don't make no promises to, uh, about money. No, you, I, I give y'all the word and you all sow it to me and it blesses my life. And I thank you. And I'm going to need y'all to bless me again tonight when I get done telling y'all what's about to happen. And I know y'all going to do it because God already told me you were. So she, she starts working all this stuff. Mind you, this is happening months before I'm going to tell y'all what happened. Preparation period. Touch somebody and say, get prepared, get prepared, get prepared. Find you somebody to, to, to market you. Get some new pictures done. Change your hair. Get your face done. Change your house. Take the pictures off the wall that you didn't have from 1980. Take down black Jesus. If you got black Jesus behind you, you might not win other cultures. You might not appeal to other nationalities. Huh? Change the paint. Put some lashes on. Put some lipstick on your, on your face. I'm talking right. I'm talking right. Uh, come to Jesus, Church of God Ministries. That's, that's all you're going to draw is, is, is a certain group. That's all you're going to draw. Jesus Christ, our Lord Restaurant. You're going to miss a lot of people because you're limited in your thinking. So, Siobhan... I need you to go on social media and you're going to use social media to bring me glory. And you're going to do it not in a matrix. You're going to go beyond the matrix. You're not going to be limited and you will do what I tell you to do. So you will pray for who I tell you to pray for, whether the church people like it or not, whether they agree or not, whether they rally with you or not, whether they call you an opportunist or say you're trying to get on the big stage or not, you will obey me. And I am praying for celebrities. This ain't start. Those of you that have followed me know I've been praying for Kanye West since 2016. So this ain't me jumping on a Kanye bandwagon. This ain't me jumping on a Diddy bandwagon. This ain't me jumping on a Justin Bieber. Track, follow my record. I've always had a heart for the unsaved. I've always had a heart for the public figure. I've always had a heart for the celebrity. I understand what it means to be in the public eye, but not on that magnitude. I understand what it means to have all eyes on you, but not on that magnitude, not yet. So my heart went out to them because I understand how the enemy could blind you with things, with money, where you don't realize that you need Jesus. 
And so I'm taking on the assignment of being that voice. And many question, what's wrong with her? And why she always got to be talking about uh, social issues? And why she always involved with what's going on in the hip-hop world? And why she don't pray for the church folks? She always praying for celebrities. And I had to drown out all of that noise and stay obedient to what the Father has told me to do. Are you all with me tonight? It's bigger than you imagine. Get out of your little box. Get out of just seeing yourself amongst just your kind. Get out of seeing yourself of just being right there in that city where you're from. Some of you guys in the same house, in the same town that you was born in. I'm talking to somebody. I mean your mama had the house. You was born in the house, mama gone, and you still live there and don't have no desire for nothing else. Some of you all ain't been outside your city. You are comfortable right where you are. Some of you been working the same job for 50 years and you're comfortable just staying there to receive your pension. God says bigger. God says bigger. In the same church, doing the same thing, singing the same songs, God says bigger. Receiving the same pain, God says bigger. Thinking the same way, eating the same food. Some people, y'all got the same routine. We can say the routine with you. You're going to come home from work. You're going to hang your coat up on the rack. You're going to put your shoes in this corner. You're going to warm up your tuna fish. After tuna fish, you're going to watch the news. After the news, you're going to read the newspaper. And by 930, you're going go to uh, go to bed and get up at 6 and do the same thing all over again. God is saying, break it. Bigger. It's bigger. It's bigger. And some of you have been called to break that cycle of being content and being average. You've been called to break that cycle of procrastination, of thinking broke. I don't let broke people hang around me. I don't, I don't, I don't listen to poor mouth folks. I don't know. I don't know. As soon as they start talking like that, I, I get, I, I get away from them. And those that are in my circle know that I'm not even taking you with me to a store. If you're looking at how much everything costs. My mama is the queen of making sure she buy everything that's off brand. And it just makes me itch. I want us to have the best stuff. We ain't got to always get the Equate brand. Equate is fine. I ain't got nothing wrong with Walmart. But there's some things I don't want the Equate brand. There's some things I want the Heinz brand. Right? The, we was in a grocery store the other day, and, and, and my husband had me in tears. He said, baby, I hate this store. I said, why? He said, because they don't have Rice Krispie Treats. They Rice Krispie Treats is called Price Krispie Treats. He said, I, I, I don't like shopping in here because, you know, he, he's bougie. I said, baby, I'm sure they have the regular Rice Krispie. He said, look, look, it's a, it says Price Krispies. He said, now what is that? When I tell y'all I holler, I don't want Price Krispies. I want Kellogg's Rice Krispie Treats. Some of y'all are okay. The first thing you do is go to the sale rack. The first thing you do is ask, where's the clearance? You don't even take time to even look at the store at the, at the regular price stuff. Because you already in your mind have said, I can't afford that. So you walk right from, from the, in the store, you go right to the back. No, no, no. I want to feel what this, this expensive stuff feel like. I want to try it on. I want to look at it because there's coming a day that if I want to pay full price, I'll be able to. And I, if I want to go to the consignment shops that I love to, cook, to go to, I'll probably never stop doing that. I'll go there. But if I want to go to Neiman Marcus and buy something brand new, I'll be able to do that. I'm helping somebody right now because some of y'all got a cheap mentality. Some of you got a small mentality, and that small mindset is going to mess you up. Let's go to the word real quick. I'm going to help you. No, number 13. Y'all not telling me I'm talking good. I received the seed. I received the seed, Latoya. Thank you. Thank you. Go to numbers 13. If you have not shared this live, go ahead and share it, because I got something that's going to bless your socks off by the end of this live today, baby. It's going it's to bring y'all the tears like it brought me to tears. I was so overwhelmed, I went to bed for the rest of the day. Numbers the 13th chapter. Numbers 13. All right? 
Numbers 13, verse 1. I'm going to give y'all some time. Somebody tell me that we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. Come on, get the Bible. Kelly said, you're talking good. Deacon Orlando said, you're speaking. Nina said, come on. Come on. Quarter said, that was me. Come on, past tense was. That's right. We ain't small-minded no more. I'll be honest. Hey, my girl, you're talking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Living in a small house and having some people, it's all right. But there's some of us that understand we need to make room for the blessing. And we ain't going to be cramming all our blessings in one bedroom, one closet. We need space. We need space. We need space. We don't need just one car. Something might break down. I need multiple. I got to get where I'm going. I don't need just money to pay bills. I need money to be able to sow. I, need, I, I had several people already tonight. And I am down, y'all. I showed my husband my little envelope today. You know, I tell y'all about being a wise wife and how I stash money. And I've stashed a good amount. Baby, my stash is at $200. And somebody just texted my phone and says, I need some money because I have an emergency. And I just sent them the money I had left. Because that's how I operate. Because that ain't that, that two hundred dollars, I need much more than that. I need two million. So I have no problem with releasing what I have so God can release more to me. Numbers 13, y'all got it. Here the Lord gives a word to the children of Israel. Look at verse 2. He says, Send down men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I what? Which I have given unto the children of Israel. Put your finger on the word given. It is already what? Theirs. The Lord is giving Moses instructions. Go ahead and find some men to go spy out the land that I have already given to the children of Israel. This land that I'm sending men to go look at is already yours. I just want you to get a glimpse of where you're going. And many of you, that's what's happening right now. God is giving you a glimpse. I'm in a little room right now, but this is a glimpse of my TV show. So it's small right now, but he's just giving me a glimpse. I'm being prepared for the television. I'm being prepared for the lights, for the camera, because I get anxiety, whether y'all know it or not, in front of the camera. I get nervous. My underarms get the sweating every Monday. Every podcast, they'll tell you, I am nervous. So all of this is glimpses for me so that when you get on that big stage, baby, you're going to kill it. He's giving them a glimpse of what their, what their blessing is going to be. Go peek at it. And verse 3 says, And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness, and I want you all to peek this, all the men were what? What your Bible say? All the men were what? Were what? All the men were heads. So Moses didn't send no chunks. Moses picked the leaders. I'm picking all my leaders. I'm picking my strong men. I'm picking those that lead their family. I want you all to go and spy out the land. Now, when you go to verse 17 through 20, jump over to the verses. Verses 17 through, 17 through 20, there, Moses is saying, now y'all, here go the instructions. I need you guys to go to this land, and I want you guys to bring me back a report. Tell me if the land is good. Tell me if that land flows with milk and honey. Tell me, baby, if those grapes are big like, like we hear they're big. Tell me if you see uh, uh, what you see on the land. Tell me what it looks like, what it feels like, and come back and bring us a report. Are you all following the story? So, now verse 27. They done went. They done spat out the land. Y'all jump with me to 27. They say in verse 27, and they told him, and they said, we came unto the land that you sent us, and surely 
It flowed with milk and honey. And as a matter of fact, Moses, we even brought back some proof. Here is some fruit from the land. And now go to verse 28. Nevertheless, the people that dwell there That, 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 nevertheless, the people that are there, they're strong. And the cities were had these great big walls. And we saw giants. You better get out of your head if you want bigger. You better drown out the noise if you want bigger. You better not let yourself get psyched out of your blessing. Because everything looks like you don't qualify. They done brought back proof that what God said he's going to do is for real. We got a, here's a piece of the manifestation. This great, it took about three of us to bring one great over here. And y'all got all this proof. You saw the milk and honey. You got the signs. You had the visions. And you going to come and say, but but I, but I, 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 but I ain't got, but I don't feel qualified, but I don't have the support, but I ain't got the building, but I don't have the money, but I don't have the people, but I don't have the education. The walls were big and, and the people looked like they were stronger than us. Here they go, small talking. Here they go, a pump talking, chump talking. And on top of that, we saw giants. And we saw the Amalekites. And we saw the Hittites. And we saw the Jebusites. And we saw the, they start listing all of their enemies. They're psyching themselves right out of their blessing. They're psyching themselves right out of their bigger. Here God was getting ready to give them their own land as an inheritance. And they allowed their small seeing and their small thinking to cause them to forfeit the blessing. 2023 is not for the faint. 2023 is not going to be for the weak. This new year ain't going to be for the scary. This new year ain't going to be for the nervous. This new year ain't going to be for the punks. You're being prepared now not to be a punk. Y'all ain't going to hear it like this from nobody. I already know. I already know. Because I talk straight out my mouth. You're being prepared now not to be a chump. You're being prepared to be like, what? I work for God. What, what's, what's, what's wrong? What don't you understand? What, 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 what's wrong? Yeah. Yeah, I, I got this. Yeah, I'm ready. You might be shaking in your boots, but baby, I'm going to be ready because God opened up a door. God is sending me there. This right here ain't it. This ain't, this too small for me. I know that. This space ain't it. It's too small for me. I need my own studio. I need a whole other building that we're going to go to. This ain't it. That's what I'm talking about. That's the attitude that, 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 that the prepared have. That, that, that's the attitude of those who don't dream small dreams. That, that, that's the attitude of those who, who say, you know what? I want everything that God has for me. My Lolita was on the phone with me today. She said, uh, Siobhan, no, she called me prophetess. She said, real talk, you are the hardest working woman I have ever met. I don't stop. They call me Pharaoh in the house. Because they know, it's like I got a whole whip. Let's go. Let's work. Let's do it. Let's post it. Let's build it. Bubbo, let's go. Ain't got time. We ain't got time to be slacking. We ain't got time to be chilling. We ain't got time to be... Are y'all millionaires yet? Well, get up. Uh, are we owning a whole bunch of buildings yet? Well, let's go. Have we won thousands and upon thousands of souls yet? Well, let's keep going. Let's keep preaching. Let's keep praying. Let's keep traveling. Let's keep going. We ain't got time to, 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 be, to be slacking. The Bible says, work while it's day. So when it's time to rest, I'm going to rest. 
But when it's time to get up at work, I'm working until it's time to go to sleep. Because I am prepared for bigger. They psyched themselves out of the blessing. Verse 32 says, And they brought up an evil report, which they surged unto the children of Israel. And they told the children of Israel, who are waiting for the good news and waiting to hear, tell us, tell us all about it. Tell us what you saw. Tell us, tell us, tell us. And these scary jokers who are leaders, who are heads, who were men gonna say, we saw, we saw giants in the land. And verse 33 says, and there we saw giants who were the sons of Anak, which come from the giant family. And when we saw them, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. I'm not talking to grasshoppers tonight. I'm not talking to grasshoppers. And if you are a grasshopper, by the end of tonight, you will not be anymore. Grasshoppers all little and just jumping and nervous and moving. Boo, boo, boo. Oh, we ain't no grasshoppers. These jokers saw giants that were on their land and they let those giants psych them out of their blessing. And they said, when we looked at the giants and they looked at ourselves, we saw ourselves unqualified. You are qualified for the bigger. You are qualified for the greater. You are qualified for the more. It's not too much. It's not over the top. You ain't got to apologize for not being content. You don't have to be okay with this being settled with here. No, there's more. There's bigger. I got to get to where I know God showed it to me. God spoke it to me. I dreamed it. I've been dreaming this as a little girl. I've, I've seen it. I've tasted it. I've smelled it. Who am I talking to? And we will not get psyched out of the bigger. And for some of you, I spoke this. I don't know on what lives. I told you guys that for some of you, it is going to start before the new year comes in. That you are not going to have to wait until 2023. But it is getting ready to hit right now. And I'm prophesying it again to those of you that did not receive it that time. That it is not going to happen in January. But after tonight, and after you all sow, you're going to see things begin to shift immediately. I prophesy it in the name. And Jesus Christ and God the Father backs up what I say out of my mouth. And he will back up this word. You will see the manifestation of it before January 1, 2023. If you receive it, just say, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. So now, are y'all ready for this? So then you go to Numbers 14. And after they complain and already make the Israelites feel scared, then here is K uh, Moses. Excuse me. Here's yeah, Moses and Aaron. And they begin to beg the people and say, come on, guys. Y'all got to see this. Come on, y'all. God wants to bless us. And God said, I'm sick of it. I've been preparing y'all. I done told you what I was going to do. I done, put, I, I done gave you glimpses. I done brought you out of things that should have taken you out. And you're going to talk like this? He says, you will not see the promise. You will not step foot into the promised land. Because y'all are slapping me in my face, talking like y'all talking. He said, but I'm a gracious God. You ain't going to see it, but your children will inherit what was supposed to be yours. And there are many of you that are getting ready to inherit what your mother and your father was supposed to inherit. You are getting ready to do what your parents refused to do, what your parents were too afraid to do, what your parents were too small minded to do. Hey, 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 hey. I said you are getting ready to walk in it boldly. You are getting ready to get what belonged to them and what 
yours. You are getting, I'm prophesying now. You are getting ready to receive a double portion. What was theirs and what was yours. Somebody say, I received my double portion. I received my double portion. Whatever my mama didn't do, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to get the blessing that was for her and for me. My mama is a prophet of the Lord. My mama don't miss. She discerned. She's sharp as a tack. I know that's where I got it from. But she would never even call herself a preacher. Well, I call myself one. I am a preacher. I am a voice for God. I'm a prophet of the Lord. I'm a serial preneur. I'm called to the marketplace. I'm called to the secular realm. And I'm called to the church. That is who I am. And I make no apologies for it. Because I work for God. So what they were afraid to say. I'm not afraid to say it. What they were afraid to do, I'm not afraid to do it. What my people around me was afraid to do, I don't want to wear that. I don't want to say that. I don't want to post that. Uh, I don't want to mess with that. I'm going to do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Because I, I, I'm not scared. I'm backed by God. And I'm going to receive double portion. I'm going to get your blessing and mine. Since you was too scary to do it. Double shall be my portion. So God wore them out and said, you won't walk foot. You won't step foot into this blessing. Yeah, I had bigger for you, but you ain't going to get it. You're not going to get it. Your children will inherit what was yours. And when you go further into numbers, you will see that the only ones from that generation that received the blessing was Caleb and Joshua. Because their faith did not fail them. Caleb like, yo, we can take the land. We, listen, if God gives us the victory, we well able to conquer it. And he old. He was 80 years old when he got the blessing, but his faith never failed. He never changed his declaration. I don't care if you don't see it. You don't change your declaration. All right, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting this website done, and I done took these pictures. And, you know, we only got a few prescribers, subscribers on the podcast. But I know what the Lord said. I know he told me masses. I know he said massive. I know he's going to hear my voice, and it's going to be used to bring him glory all over the world. This will happen before I die. So I will not look at what I see. I will hold on to what God said. And now here goes the testimony. So I just say testify. Come on, testify. Tell us the story. Testify because the testimony is going to amp y'all up. The testimony is going to fire you up. We overcome the wicked one. When the devil think he won, when the devil think that he's going to discourage us, baby, we overcome the wicked one by the blood of Jesus Christ and the word of our testimony. So I get a call from Lolita. She's like, listen, one of my girlfriends, she follows you on social media. She says, and to be honest with you, I really think what drew her to your page is you praying for these celebrities because we don't see church people doing this and it's like you know it's something that we never seen before we know your convictions we know how strong you are you know in your conviction of living holy and living for God and not compromising but then you pray for celebrities and you love them and you and your heart goes out to them and you up here just weeping and wailing on behalf of those who may not even want God this lady that see you on social media. And she works with people that does TED Talks. And I don't know if you know anything about TED Talk, but look it up. They're, 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 they're TEDx stages. And, 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 and there are platforms where people speak to masses. When, when you go look at it uh, uh, on YouTube, just go look at how many subscribers is on there. So I'll go boo, boo, boo. Let me see TEDx. I heard the TED Talk. Let me see. 39 point whatever, whatever, million subscribers on YouTube. I'm like, what? Yeah, and, and you know, they think that this will be a great platform for you to come up and just share whatever it is you want to share. Not many people in the religious system, you know, we, 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 we call on because, you know, we, we don't want you to, to preach to the people. You know, we want you to be able to inspire them. We want you to be able, you know, to give them steps, to give them solutions. But this is not a church. This is not this is not a church uh, a setting. 
Baby, Cyber Church prepared me. Yes. When I said bye-bye to the system a long time ago, I was being prepared then. I didn't know. I'm just doing what I do when the Lord tell me to do. Post this reel. Show your family. Show you and your husband when y'all on the air mattress. And it's just the air mattress and y'all in the house. Show your kids. Show times when you're vulnerable. Show yourself cooking. Well, you know, you're, you're, you're a pastor and you should be really private about your life. And, and, and why do you tell so much of your business? We don't want to see your business because the Lord told me to. That's how I got my husband. Because he saw me on social media. He saw me at the games with my children. He saw me cooking on social media. He saw me in the car riding, making videos. That's how my husband found me. So the lady found me on social media. I haven't met her yet. I can't wait to meet her so I can hug her and kiss her. But she's connected to, again, my Lolita that the Lord brought to me to say, I'm here because I see where you're going. So I'm like, all right. I, 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 I guess I can do it. You know, what I got to do? So they put me on the phone with the curators of TED Talk. One of the curators, one of the top curators of TED Talk. And he tells me this opportunity is major. We believe that this would be a stage for you where you're going to reach millions of people. And this is going to take place December the 15th in Miami. I'm like, December the 15th as in uh, next month, December? Yeah, we have an opening. We want you. It's going to cost. People pay thousands of dollars to be on a TED Talk stage because once they get on a TED Talk stage, do you know that you'll be called into corporate settings and into the marketplace to be able to share and inspire and motivate and they will pay you thousands of dollars. So it's going to cost you. So I get online with y'all last Monday because I, this, this had came to me Monday, right? And I say to y'all, y'all, I got, I, I, I wouldn't ask you if I don't need it. But I got something that I need to do and I need y'all to bless me. Y'all gave me the, enough, the amount of money I needed to pay for that TED Talk, which is December the 15th in Miami. Okay? So, get on the phone with the guy. I'm like, we good to go. We going to do it. He says, tell me what you want to talk about. And I tell him the same cyber church message that God gave me last week about discontentment. Divine discontentment. The Lord was already allowing y'all to be my pre-TED Talk audience. I didn't know. I was being prepared. Do y'all hear me? I'm screaming. So I, I, I talk about this contentment and, 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 and what that means. It means that you're being pushed to go higher and how when you're uncomfortable, that's a sign that where you are, you've outgrown. And so I share this message with the curator. He's like, this is good. This is good. Okay. You're going to have to do this. He said, now, 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 you can't say this. You can't say this. You cannot push Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior on this stage. You can get up there and talk about God all day long, but you cannot have an altar call. Say, yes, sir. You cannot push science. Yes, sir. You cannot push politics. Yes, sir. So we're going to outline. We're going to see your points. Or we're going to get it together. Boom, 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 boom. We on the phone with him. Lolita's on the line. My administrator's on the line. And I am just like, yo, this is about to happen in a couple of weeks. Like, I'm looking for a blessing somewhere else. And guess what? This opportunity found me. I want to say this to you all. You will not have to look for the blessing. But the blessing will find you right where you are. You will not have to run after an opportunity. But the opportunity will find you right where you are. You will not have to search and try to connect with people. But they will find you right where you are. Whoever that's for, receive that. Receive that. I prophesy to you tonight that they are getting ready to find you. They're going to find you in your state. They're going to find you on your job. They're going to find you on social media. They're going to find your business card. Your name will ring in their ear. Your echo, Rabbi Sa. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said your name will ring. God will give them dreams about you.
you. God will send your face before them. You will not have to run after anything. They will find you. And when opportunity and preparation collide, there's your destiny moment. Do you all hear what I'm saying? So we talk on the phone with this curator and he is a beast. And he give me the whole lineup of how this thing going to function and how it's going to flow. You can have about 18 to 20 minutes to go up there and talk and say what it is that you believe is on your heart to share with the millions. And we're going to believe that your TED Talk is going to hit. And we get off the phone, but before we get off, I thank him for the opportunity. Sir, I can't wait to meet you. You know, okay, I got the money to be able to, to go and take this opportunity. Now, God, provide the money for my children. I get off of the phone. I call Lalita and I call Sharita and I'm like, y'all, what do y'all think? How y'all think I did? You know, he was asking me questions and I don't know, I was just so nervous. And they're like, no, you did great. You killed it. It was amazing. While I'm on the phone with them, the curator says, January the 6th, I'm going to have my largest TED Talk in Hollywood. He said, you know, I think that stage is going to be the stage you need to be on. He said, I'm having my TED Talk in the Dolby Theater. That holds about 3500 in the Dolby Theater, and I have major influencers speaking. But there's a spot open there that I believe you're supposed to be on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all not saying nothing. I, 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 just, I just got right nervous and started sweating, and I'm like saying to myself, so I'm, I'm like, Lolita, what, what's happening? Is he saying, don't do December 15th? Is he saying, like, we put December the 15th away and we going to Hollywood, January 6th? Is that what he says? Is he saying that he wants me to be on the stage with these other people? Uh, is that what he's saying? She's like, that's exactly what he's saying. I said, I, 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 so you're saying that. I'm not going to be in Miami in, in, in that room. You're saying that he wants to put me on a main TED Talk stage right in the heart of Hollywood, in the Dolby Theater, Roxbury, Rosbury Park, right there with the Hollywood stars in the grounds. That, that theater, is that what you're saying? She said, yes, that's what we're saying. I said, sir, what I got to do? He said, it's going to cost you more. He said, but this is the stage you got to be on. He said, that one in Miami, that's too small for you. He said, you need to be in Hollywood. Now, those of you, my cyber family, you all understand that Hollywood thing for me, correct? This is my first speaking engagement for the new year. It's going to be in Hollywood. Who do I say I'm called to? God is just getting me closer and closer to the people that have to hear my voice. So I told that man, I said, yes, because the Lord told me you better not say no. And the crazy thing is I got a word from the Lord when I preached in Phoenix and the lady says, you're going to be presented with a, with a business opportunity. She said, and you're going to battle because it's going to be it's going to cost you some money. She said, but don't say no. She said, because this opportunity is getting ready to change your entire life. She said, this will be your launching pad. I got this word in Phoenix, Arizona last month. So when he tells me, I want you in Hollywood, I said, okay, so I got people that like support me. I said, can they come? He said, you can bring everybody you want to bring. So guess what? Y'all can come too. Guess what? The seats are only $10. So they're going to tag the link in the comments. We're going to LA January the 6th. And I will be one of the speakers alongside of Diddy's former CEO. And this other one, multi-millionaire and wealth strategist. Y'all, I'm reading the, the bios of these speakers. And I'm saying to myself, I am not supposed to be on this stage. And the Lord said, why not? Why, why not? 
You're, you're definitely supposed to be there. And I'm the one that put you in the heart of the people to get you where you're supposed to be. Here, you're thinking about some small doors. I'm, I'm expecting for a call to speak at a conference. And God is getting ready to put me on the stage to preach to millions. Well, not preach, but speak. But y'all already know what's going down. Millions? I already know. That God is going to use that TED talk to reach. I already know. Because God is opening up this door. I didn't go looking for it, y'all. It found me. And this is how we start in 2023. We're starting in Hollywood. I see it as an opportunity to walk out what the Father has placed in me for years. Siobhan, I'm giving you a glimpse of who your audience is getting ready to be. And so if you guys are in agreement with me, with this opportunity, I need your help. It's costing me thousands because I want all 20 of my kids to come. I want my team to come. We got to get hotels. We got to get plane tickets. And the Lord said, Siobhan, you will ask your supporters because they believe in you. And I need you guys to sow. And I need you guys to sow big. And I need you guys to sow bigger than what you've been sowing. I ain't no crooked preacher. I'm not going to sit up here and make up a word and, and make up a false prophecy to get your money. No, I'm asking you, can you please sow into this moment for me? Can you please sow into what God has prepared me for all of my life? And I pray same grace, unexpected opportunities that are bigger than you can imagine. I did not imagine myself on a TEDx stage. I've imagined myself filling up arenas. I've dreamed and, and I've had visions of me packing out stadiums, preaching the gospel. I've had visions of going into corporate America and speaking. But I never saw this one. And he said, don't, I don't want you to even get, you know, excited about the audience that will be there. He said, I want you to understand the subscribers that subscribe to TED Talk. I want you to get into your brain the millions of people that will hear your voice. This is a fulfillment to prophecy, y'all. So I need you guys to sow. And I mean, I need you guys to sow some money into me. I need you guys to sow. I want you to ask the father, what should I give her? I need thousands of dollars. Because what I'm not going to do, I'm not passing this opportunity up. And God has people already waiting to sow. I got somebody inbox me and said, I got tithes just waiting on the side. And I'm just watching you. And I'm just watching and watching and watching. I've been just storing up my tithes for years because I don't have a pastor. And I believe you're the person that I'm supposed to give them to. Well, if you own here, I am the person. And go ahead and release them. Because we need it now. We need that money now, Doc. Go ahead and send those thousands. Those millions, I need them. Because we're going to LA. And those of you that want to go with me and be in the audience so that I can feel comfortable with my folks, I want you guys in LA with me. January the 6th. The flyer should be out by next week with all the details, with the link so you can go and purchase your tickets. But I think they're putting everything in the in the in the uh comments. Um, for you guys to buy your tickets, at least hold your tickets, right? And then you can start looking for hotels around the area. But we are going to be in Hollywood on Friday night from 6.30 to 9 o'clock, I believe. There are about 12 speakers. And when you go to the link, you'll see all the bios of the speakers. And you're going to see my name right along the line with these other amazing people, guys. The Father says bigger. He says it's bigger than you can ever imagine. And you will not psych yourself out of this blessing. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to have all kind of practice TEDx's. One of my cyber churches is going to be a TEDx. And y'all going to listen to my whole thing from beginning to end. I'm like, hi, how you doing, guys? Today I want to talk about, I mean, I'm going to give it to y'all. And y'all going to be my audience. Because when I hit that stage on January the 6th, I'm going to kill it. 
Are you all hearing what I'm saying? I work for God and I'm about to do it for the Lord. And he said, I can say God. Y'all know I'm going to say it. I work for God. I'm going to say that. I can't be kicked off for saying God. So I'm going to say it. And I can't wait to say it. I can't wait to say it so millions can hear it. So I pray that you guys will partner with me, that you all will make a sacrifice to sow into this, which I believe is a, is, is, a, is a very significant moment in my life. And the same way the Father has started this process before 2023 for me, as you sow into this, the same grace be released upon you. Because guess what? This is going to be the first of many. This ain't it. Tag somebody. Comment to somebody and tell them, we just getting started. But what a way to start, baby. What a way to start. I'm thinking December the 15th. And God says, nah, I got bigger for you. You're thinking that space. And God says, nah. I got a whole, uh, a whole, a uh, 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 plaza for you. You thinking that home and God is saying, nah, I'm going to let that fall through because I got bigger. You're thinking that one opportunity and God is saying, nah, baby, I got multiple. You're thinking just one stream and God is saying multiple. Somebody shout bigger, bigger. Bigger, come on. Now start testifying. Bigger for my family. Start declaring it. Bigger, 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 bigger. Bigger on my job. Bigger in my finances. Bigger for my ministry. Bigger in my consecration. Come on. I want you all to start typing. You start typing. Bigger for my children. Bigger for my husband. I was on my knees right here this morning early crying out to God for y'all. I said, God, do it for him. Give him bigger. I said, God, do it for my husband. Give him bigger clients. Give him more. God, don't let him just have one group. We thank God for the saints. We thank God for the church folks. But God, send those athletes. Send those basketball players. Send those actors. Send those celebrities. Send them, Father. And guess what happened? The same curator that has me to speak. And guess what? Shy is making him a jacket. God is answering prayers quickly. Bigger, bigger, bigger in my mindset, bigger, bigger in how I talk, bigger, bigger in my, in my response, bigger in my attitude, bigger in my posture, bigger in how I present myself, bigger, bigger, it won't be in my home kitchen, it will be in my own restaurant, bigger. It won't be just a devotional. It's going to be a novel. Bigger. Bigger. Who's receiving this word? Habo. Red side. God, I thank you tonight for releasing this word. And I thank you, Father, for the testimony that you have given to me and released me to share with these who have been assigned to my voice. I pray, God, that their belly is stirred up, that they are leaping in their spirit. I pray, God, that they see themselves there just like I saw myself bigger than where I am. I pray, God, that this word has caused their faith to be elevated, to be ignited, and to be increased. And I pray, Father, that they will be so happy happy that they will rejoice with me that's rejoicing and as they're rejoicing and as they're sowing into this God you're releasing to them what they need just as you sent Lolita to find me just as you sent the lady to find me just as you sent glory to God the curator to find me and the others to find me and those that will find me God do it for these who are listening do it for these who have received this word. Do it for these who will sow sacrificially into what you're doing for this 2023. We receive bigger. We receive greater. We receive God more than we can ask or even think. We thank you for finding us worthy of it. We thank you for choosing us for the 
blessing, for the bigger, for the promise. And we will not psych ourselves out. We will not talk ourselves out. We will not let the lies of the enemy drown out what you're saying. We will not listen, glory to God, to the naysayers and the doubters and those who can't see. We will not listen to negative voices. But we listen to you. And we trust you all the way. So God, I thank you for provision. And I thank you, Father, that I will have more than enough. I declare abundance. Abundance. I thank you that my cash app, my PayPal, my Zelle, the ministry accounts are being flooded now with seeds for what you're doing now and what you have in store for my future. Because, Father, you know that as you bless me, I'm going to bless your people. As you open the door for me, I'm going to open the door for your people. I'm not going to be selfish with the blessing. So I thank you, Father, that they will not be selfish with the seed. Honor them. For honoring your daughter. And we receive bigger tonight. In Jesus name. And I declare overflow. In every area of their lives. I release now even thousands. I call. I thank you father. For thousands that shall be released. I thank you for thousands. I thank you God for sponsors. I thank you God for millionaire donors. That will sow into this move. That will sow God. Hallelujah. Into this obedience. I bless you for it. I won't take no credit for it. I will tell everybody you did it. I will tell everybody that this was of you. And I will not compromise. I will not misrepresent you. Nor will I misrepresent these that I'm assigned to. I thank you for the opportunity. And God, I'm going to use it to bring you glory. We bless your name. And we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. If y'all have any questions on where to sow, how to sow, send us inboxes. Preferably, my team has been in here in the comments because I don't want to miss no blessings. But if y'all have any questions, send me an inbox. If y'all want to send the money directly to me, send me an inbox. I promise you I'm going to respond. And I always pray over every seed that is given to me. I love you all. And I'm excited. And I hope that you guys can come and be with me in Hollywood January the 6th. Have a good night. Love y'all.